Um, well, you know, UNICEF is present in 190 countries and territories. And uh, the modus operandi of UNICEF is always through partners. Of course, first of all, the country, governments, and, uh, but implementing partners, agencies, academic institutions, etc. Second point that I want, the, in UNICEF, we don't really make a very strong separation between our emergency work and our programmatic work. So we tend to stay for extended periods in countries where we do program work. And I think this is relevant for this presentation because we we want to focus on the, not just responding and preparing and responding to outbreaks, but actually the work that happens in between outbreaks when the hotspots are out of the spotlight. In the last two years, UNICEF, we have been working in developing what we call the Public Health Emergencies Team, which basically, which I lead, and basically uh, the objective is to bring all the different streams of work that we had in preparedness, response, and programmatic work for, uh, ep for epidemics, for public health emergencies, into a single program. So where you may have heard we have capacity for WASH and for risk communication and for health and for immunization. And those things are now being brought under a single coordination mechanism. So I thought those introductory points are quite relevant to our work in cholera. And a specific work in cholera, we are aligning it around the roadmap and uh, around the partnership that we have in front of me. So um, around the three axes, the five areas of work and now coming specific to each of the axes on axis one detection and response to outbreaks technical assistance and expertise we have a strong search capacity uh, we deploy uh, starting from country level usually whenever there's an outbreak there's already a country office which has a strong capacity and then the second layer from international to co colleagues from other countries that includes the preparedness and response plans. More on that later, but uh, we are involved through IHR mechanisms as well as through country level mechanisms. Technical guidance, you may be familiar with the cholera toolkit um, and uh, we hope to be contributing to the uh, cholera outbreak response manual that, uh, that well, we've been uh, cooperating with that as well as uh, updating our own resources for internal capacity building and uh, leadership in WASH that you know about. Rapid response teams have been a focus of work in recent years. So there's operational teams in four countries. You can see there's been uh, reviews, are ongoing uh, impact studies with support from CDC and uh, number of briefings at country level. So that's that's uh, an important area of work for the response side. Procurement and supply, as you know, is one of the strongest part of uh, uh, UNICEF involvement in, in all kind of uh, programs, but certainly in cholera. That includes prepositioning of materials, supply of OCV, and strengthening supply change. A lot of uh, UNICEF work, as I said, particularly during the non-emergency phase, is about system strengthening, health system strengthening, wash system strengthening, and certainly strengthening supply chain systems. Capacity building and training. Uh, we're strengthening our epidemiological capacity to, to have a better ability to um, understand and analyze, and this is not limited to classic epidemiology. We're extending to social science, uh, environmental health information systems, etc., and trying to integrate those. So that's a that's kind of a, a new addition to the toolbox of UNICEF that we're working on at the moment. On the on axis two, it's technical support for coasted tools for national cholera plans, and uh, what you see in the pictures are the tracking uh, the tracking mechanism for the for the national tools. I'm, oh, wow. <laughs> um, and the support and monitor for development and monitoring the national country. There's about 27 countries which are involved with us in, on this at the moment. I'm rushing because I have no time. Uh, WASH advocacy, 
and uh, always in collaboration with WHO, with other partners and within the GTFCC. Procurement and supplies, I let you see the figures on the screen. And strong involvement as well in coordination of resources and partnerships, partnerships being the main mechanism of work for UNICEF. So that's within GTFCC and the different subgroups, particularly the working group for WASH and the resource and partnerships, and you all know uh, we are involved probably in activities with your organizations. One area that we have developed and we continue developing uh, quite strongly is the regional cholera platforms that were born almost 10 years ago uh, in uh, Dakar was the first one. They've been playing an important role in information management and now we're in the process of aligning them as well with the roadmap and we're um, kind of setting the basis to allow these regional platforms to become a hub for GTFCC in areas like information management, support to countries, monitoring of national cholera plants, etc. There's two persons here which I want you to stand up actually and be identified um, from the Nairobi cholera platform and from the uh, Amman platform. And I want you to identify yourself because uh, if it's Anirban and Pierre. Anirban is over there. He leads the color up. Well, co leads with WHO. Co leads with WHO, absolutely right, thank you. And uh, Pierre uh, in Nairobi. Co leads with IFRC. Co leads with IFRC. And I want you to identify because uh, they have a lot of interesting uh, experience on how the regional platform can contribute to the implementation of the roadmap. So please don't hesitate talking to them as well as to myself uh, during the break about what are the regional platforms doing. Final slide, some strategic priorities and next steps. So uh, increased investment, as you know, we've been working with some of you on the investment case and there's a lot of debate about how that will be used, how can that contribute to uh, the success of the roadmap. So that will be discussions which we're hoping to have today as well. Increased country support through the regional platforms and directly having a more predictable demand. The supply division, as you know, is involved with the producers of a vaccine in a very uh, fluid dialogue about how much OCV do we need, how much can we procure, what is the demand, and that process is, is key for, for next steps. Uh, building capacity, both at country level and institutionally, and that's for UNICEF and, and for partners, and the strengthening community engagement, another strong area of work um, through information system, through social science intelligence, through risk communication, community engagement, etc. So that was a very fast overview of a lot of activity UNICEF implements. Thank you. Thank you.